In this video, we're going to take a look at how to create a spanning tree using a breadth first search. So how will a breadth first search differ from a depth first search? Well, if you'll recall, on our last video, we started with a root node and then we chose the next vertex and went as far as we could go with that particular vertex. And in this case, for a breadth first search, instead, we are still going to add whatever our root node is going to be, but then we're going to add all edges incident to that vertex. So in this case, I would add a E and a B. I would add those edges. So I'm going to add B and E to my directed rooted graph, which is of course how we're going to look at the spanning subgraph. So starting at A, I would connect to B and E. Now the important thing here is that we have to have some order. So you can go with alphabetical order or you can have whatever other order you choose. But the reason that this is important is I'm going to actually add an edge that wasn't originally in our graph to demonstrate how the algorithm might fail. So if I don't have an order, as we can see, E connects to C and B connects to C. And those are my two vertices that I'm dealing with. So the question is, according to the algorithm, should B be the one that connects to C or should E? So if you have an order and say, I'm going to use alphabetical order, then it's clear to the algorithm that we're going to be starting from B. So from B, I'm going to connect to both C and D. And now I've reached each of the vertices in my spanning tree. Whereas if there was no order, it would not be clear, should E connect to C or should B connect to C? This question may look familiar as we did it in our last video, but we were using a depth first search rather than a breadth first search. So we're going to go ahead and do the exact same example, just using a different algorithm. So this algorithm says we're going to start at A and we're going to connect all of the vertices um, that are adjacent to A. So that would be B and C and F. And I am going to use alphabetical order as my order. So I've now connected B and F and C. Again, order is important. Order says now starting from B, what can you connect to? So I'm going to connect to D. And I'm not going to continue from D. I'm now going to move over to C. So what can I connect to from C? Well, obviously I can connect to F, but I'm already there. So I'm going to connect to G. So from C, I'm going to connect to G. And from F, I'm going to connect to E. So that is what my breadth first search spanning tree would look like. Here's one last practice for you to try on your own using a breadth first search. When you are ready, press play to see how you did. So again, I will start with A. And where you start is sort of arbitrary, but we'll start with A. A connects only to one other vertex, which is C. So now I've visited both A and C. C connects to two vertices, B and E. And so now I've visited both B and E. B doesn't have any other vertices um, adjacent to it, so E is going to connect to both D and to F. Again, I'm going to use alphabetical order as my guide. So from D, I can connect only to F, which we've already visited. So I'm now going to branch off of F to visit both G and H. G can only connect to H, which has already been visited. So H will connect to I. And that is my spanning tree. Up next, we're going to take a look at minimum spanning trees. So these would be a spanning tree for a graph that is weighted with costs or times or so forth. We'll start with Prim's algorithm. 